welcome to the new Audi A8, Audi's flagship car, it's a luxury saloon, rival to the Mercedes S-Class, the BMW 7 Series. Now the question Matthew Pryor and I are going to answer today is this, if you're going to drive your own luxury car rather than be driven in it by somebody else, are you better off with this A8 or a 7 Series? Now remember, hit that subscribe button and the moment we publish a comparison video like this one, it'll be sent directly to your inbox. So between this BMW 7 Series and the Audi A8 behind me, what we don't have is what Autocar considers the benchmark of the class, which is the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. There's a reason for that. And that is because this car is the best car to drive in the segment. Before we have a head-to-head -head on that front with the A8, I think what we'll do is pull over and go through all of their respective luxury items on the inside because their respective manufacturers throw all of the new tech, all of the new kit at these cars. So it's worth going through them in a bit more detail. So this is the cabin of the 7 Series. Now this is a long 7 Series, which means A, there's loads of room in the back and it also comes with fancy screens and stuff. Our A8 that we have doesn't have that, but of course you can spec that. So let's put more attention to the front instead. Now the interior of a luxury car is clearly a really important point. You want space, you want quality, you want high grade materials. This car has all of that. There's leather across here, it's really nice. It feels solidly screwed together. Although, once we're driving, I'm gonna tell you something about this that I don't like so much. The BMW is a less visually arresting cabin than the A8s, but I think it's a more practical, more usable one. So I don't have the vast screens that you get in the A8. I do have a digital instrument pack, but it kind of does the same thing all the time. Right? You can't swap it and have a big map in the middle or anything like that. I don't mind that too much, to be honest with you. I've got a big screen up here, which can be a touch screen, or I can do gesture control for volume and other things. But the big part of its Usability comes from the iDrive dial. Now, when BMW first introduced iDrive, it was rubbish. But that was two decades ago, and it has got much, much better since that I think now it is the best in the business. It's got three enormous screens. So the one in front of me here, the normal sat-nav screen here, and all the heating controls, they're now in this screen here, which is beautifully rendered. It looks fantastic. Although it is sometimes a bit of a pain, isn't it, when you're driving along, and all you want to do is turn the temperature down, and you have to find a tiny little touchscreen button. But what I particularly like about this car is that in addition to all of the stuff which is dealt with electronically, there are some buttons, normal buttons, that are exactly where you left them for some presets or for the heater controls or for some of the suspension controls and things like that. I think that is a much underrated feature. So the whole interior is slick, it's clinical, it's not as opulent as an S-Class or even that 7 Series, but I think it's really good. And there's this little delight feature that I want to show you. Have a look at this. When you turn the car on, yeah, there it goes. Look at those vents coming forward. That looks great, doesn't it? So there we go. A good interior. Let's find out what this car is actually like to drive. What do we reckon? Oof. It's a mixture of good and not so good, I think, really. So let's talk about the engine. 3 litre twin turbo V6, 286 horsepower, loads of torque. It's got plenty of performance, so the car doesn't feel slow. But what I want in a luxury car is a sense that the car has lots of performance in reserve. The thing is, to get this car shifting along quickly, to overtake something for instance, you have to use all the throttle. It's actually a much nicer sensation when all you have to do is tickle the throttle use half the throttle travel maybe, and then you get a big rush of effortless acceleration, the kind that you get from a big, more powerful V8 engine. Of course, a V8 engine would be far less economical, but it would give you that sense of power in reserve. That's the key thing. To that end, this is, even though it's a long one, it is the 40D engine. So it's a powerful diesel engine. And this one has some trick stuff on it as well. So it gets four wheel steering, air suspension, they all get air suspension, but this has got active anti-roll bars. They connect in corners to reduce roll rate and they loosen as you go down a straight to allow the ride to lope more easily. How does it know that there is a corner coming? 
it reads it off the sat nav. It's pretty clever, that, isn't it? When you're at a junction or at a roundabout and you have to get on the power hard and quickly because you've only got a small gap to squeeze into, the transmission, after you put your foot down, takes a whole second thinking about what it's going to do. So you sit there, foot flat to the floor, and you can hear the engine spinning away, and you're not going anywhere. It's really frustrating, particularly when you're watching a car coming towards you, and that's not really in keeping with a proper luxury saloon. Where that A8 behind me has a ride which is brittle and a steering system which weights up really weirdly and artificially and a handling balance which feels sort of nose heavy and blunt. The BMW flows with a genuine sense of ease and purpose and pleasantness. And I don't think that only matters on roads like this. I think it also matters in towns or on the motorway because ride quality matters there. Steering quality matters there. Stability matters in all of these places. Steering, ah, now. This is where, for me, the A8 loses out to that seven series ahead of me. And it's quite an important point, I have to say. That seven series has got super accurate, intuitive steering. And that's what this car doesn't have, particularly around the dead ahead. So with just a few degrees of lock, it's inconsistent and it's vague. It's actually okay in corners like, like we are right now when you've got a quarter turn of lock, the steering's actually fine. But it's when you just want to meander, follow your lane, follow the road, you don't have that same precision, you don't have the same intuitive confidence that you get from that 7 Series. That's a problem because this car takes up so much road, it feels big, it is big. And so you want to be able to place it with precision all the time. And you don't really have that confidence. You do in that 7 Series. It makes it feel, that BMW, like a smaller car. It isn't any smaller, but it feels it. And when you're driving, particularly on a winding road like this one, that makes a huge difference. BMW has a really lovely level of wheel control. The body stays nice and flat. There is a little bit of float and pitch over crests, but that is to be expected from what is a luxury car, and it does it predictably. The chassis has a really pleasant balance to it, and with a longitudinal engine, predominantly rear-wheel drive, although this is an X-Drive, so it powers the fronts as well when it needs to. That gives this car that natural balance that big GT cars tend to have, and there is something of the big GT car about the 7 Series. On to what's probably my biggest reservation about this car, and I have to accept that it might just be this particular car only. The whole centre console is creaking away like mad. I think it's probably quite a lot to do with this road surface. It's a, a rolling, rollicking road surface, and so there's a lot of movement in the car, a lot of movement in the body, and it's just creaking and groaning away. It's not really good enough. That wouldn't be good enough in a £15,000 hatchback. But in a 70-odd grand luxury saloon car, that can't be allowed to happen. And let's face it, ride comfort and noise levels, and this does, I think, have a quieter ride than the A8, they also matter even if you do sit in the back. So although I am sitting here confidently telling you that this is a vastly superior car to the A8 to drive, I am also pretty sure it is a nicer car than the Audi to sit in as a passenger. I wonder what happens when we knock it into sport mode, good body control, so it's not wallowing and bouncing and heaving all over the place, it's kept in good control, tons of grip, and as you'd expect, ultimately at the limit, it understeers. I think if it did anything other than understeer at the limit, given that it's a big four-wheel drive luxury car, it would probably be a bit wrong, wouldn't it? The engine and gearbox combination, I've just taken control of the engine myself via the paddles for a while, leaving on full load and you can barely hear it. It's really quiet. It's a terrific drivetrain. It's got a really pleasant, actually quite rewarding, actually quite involving and engaging sense of driving fun, which for a car of this size, five metres plus long, is a really welcome set of traits. We were here today to work out which of these two luxury cars was best to drive, not be driven in. And clearly, how fun they are to drive isn't hugely important because they're limousines rather than sports cars. But 
we should discuss it anyway because there's a huge difference between the two cars. Yeah, there is, isn't it? And it is relevant if you're, they don't have to be fun, 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 do they? But they are more pleasurable if they are capable. And I think the 7 Series rides better, steers better, drives more nicely, it just feels less wooden, less inert. It's just a more satisfying car to spend time in, I think. One of the important differences, I think, is when you're out on a small, twisty road like this one, the Audi feels big. This feels like a smaller car. It's not, but it really does feel it. And I think actually whether, yeah, whether you're out on a road like this or whether you're on a motorway or whether you're in town or in fairness, whether you're going to an airport terminal, it's still, those things matter. Absolutely. And for all those reasons, it's the winner. So don't forget to like, subscribe. We're here every week and we're at autocar.co.uk all the time and at all good news agents every Wednesday, £3.80, 90, 80, 90. <laughs>